so uh, I think we are live now. Uh, Good. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. أولا كل سنة وأنتم طيبين وأتمنى أن أنتم تكونوا أكلتوا فتة كويس النهاردة يعني. Uh, today we have a very special session with a special friend and ex-colleague, one of the industry experts, Johan Bezen, joining us from Germany, Germany to talk about uh, how do we how do we do processor self tests in, in in safety projects? So, uh, welcome, Johan. I'm thrilled to have you today. Shukran. Shukran, Amr. Uh, Shukran. Uh, so you can start by introducing yourself and the topic. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. So welcome to everybody, my friends from Egypt, and also persons I do not know yet from Egypt, but also maybe from other places of the world uh, who found their way into this presentation. Um, my name is Johan Besum. I have been uh, working in uh, IT uh, for uh, approximately 30 years professionally and a little bit more uh, with a hobby. And I want to talk a little bit about uh, testing a Microsoft, uh, a microprocessor, uh, by using software running on the same microprocessor that is being tested, which is an, uh, uh, something a difficult proposition by itself. Um, the reason I do this is basically the necessity of uh, ISO 26262, the functional safety requirements. And uh, my target audience in this sense is uh, very low level low level ambitions, not in the sense that they do not have ambitions in the first place, <laughs> but that their ambitions are on a low level development level, meaning assembler programming and maybe below. Um, I would like to uh, address people with a basic understanding of assembly programming, and that's basically everybody with a, an IT engineering degree, because everybody got some at least one semester or trimester uh, assembly programming uh, if you did something in IT. And maybe a basic understanding of logic design, which is normally hardware design. But uh, many people still have a little bit uh, uh, background in NANDs and NORs and uh, logic gates and these kinds of things. And that should be sufficient. Okay. So um, this is basically what I would like to uh, to discuss. We will start with a little introduction. Um, the ISO 26262 and ACL, that's basically functional safety and what it basically means. Then the reason why we do need a process of self-test and what it basically means. Then of course, since we are trying to use software to check hardware that we are running on, uh, we have some limitations. So we are checking the hardware that we are running on ourselves. And that's basically uh, something similar if you want to check the uh, viability of a car that you are driving at the same time. And if you try to test the brakes when you are driving at 100 miles an hour and they don't work, then you have a problem. And that's the same as uh, we are trying to discuss today. And the basic methods are checking the registers which we will discuss briefly, the processor flags, which we will also discuss, and then checking the instructions in an effective manner. And we will use, as an example, a half adder, or uh, in this case uh, that I prepared, it's basically a full adder. But if you know some hardware design, then you know that a half adder is basically uh, a precursor to a full adder. Or if you want to turn it around, then uh, you can use a full adder with a carry in of zero to uh, mimic a half adder. Mm -hmm. But that's only for the people who did some logic design courses in university. Okay. Um, Omar, if you have any questions, uh, feel well, free to interrupt. Well, I think sure. uh, the importance of this session that um, uh, what you are trying to say here that uh, if I'm going to make a reliable uh, embedded product or, 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 or a safe embedded system. Uh, your target here is to teach us how we are going to, to write some code to make sure that the, the processor at, or the foundation we are running on is okay. 
and it is not That's causing true. errors uh, to the software that we will run. That is true. Within certain limitations, because we cannot basically guarantee 100%, mm -hmm. but we will get to the limitations uh, in the fourth section. Mm -hmm. But yes, you are co completely correct. Yeah, that's basically what we try to do. Okay. Yeah, we, we try to verify that the vehicle that we are running on, which is the processor, that it is running properly before we start the regular, normal, regular application software. Yeah, that's basically the idea of a processor self-test. I have another question. Okay. Uh, are these sure. tests run the startup or periodically? Or both? Um, they can be run periodically. Um, depends a little bit on the kind of tests. Um, I did not prepare to go into this topic uh, because it is depending on the kind of hardware, the kind of software and what you are really running at that same time, so it's really uh, an advanced topic. Mm -hmm. um, normally, I would suggest uh, for this kind of test that we are talking about today, to run them at the very, 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 very beginning, mm -hmm. as one of the very uh, first things to do after the reset power is basically the lead. Power on self-test. Mm -hmm. uh, even the power on self-test is done after uh, the processor self-test. Yes, because uh, I must make yeah. sure that my processor is, is okay so that I can proceed with yes. my the rest of my software. Yes, and the power on self-test is normally uh, something that a PC is doing. Yeah, a power on self-test, the POST, is something that we're talking about if we're talking about a PC running. Okay. And this uh, uh, processor self-test is something when we have an embedded system that is not Windows or Linux or anything like this. But it is basically running our own system. Maybe it's running an Autosar system. Maybe it's running an even simpler system. Maybe it's not running an operating system at its uh, uh, at its core at all. Okay. But it still needs to verify that the hardware that we are running on is running properly. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Good. So let me continue. Please. Okay. This is just me. Yeah, I've been doing C programming since 1984. I did two compilers and a real-time uh, preemptive operating system kernel. I have a similar experience in 78, which is probably most uh, well, people well, were not I, even born. I, I think I can confirm that you work early in the industry because I can see floppy desks behind you <laughs> in the yeah, library. I have. <laughs> I have three and a half inch floppy disks uh, uh, beside, bes uh, behind me. Uh, if somebody doesn't believe me, I can put someone on the camera. Uh, yeah. So this is basically, I'm not sure, I don't see my own camera, but it's okay. I think, Omri, um, you can confirm that yes, you can, can see. Yes, I, I can see the 3.5 three uh, floppy disks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, I even have five and a quarter inch floppy disks somewhere, but I couldn't find them in time, so forget okay, it. Okay. Um, more important is I have written processor self-test for three different processor families uh, in the last, uh, I don't know, 10 years or so. So this is basically my experience background. Um, if you have any specific questions, feel free to contact me on LinkedIn or anything like this. And uh, then we can discuss details. And uh, if you need some extra questions answered, also not a problem. Okay. So um, there is an ISO standard 26262 for functional safety. And it is basically covering several ASL levels of automotive safety, uh, automotive safety, integrity blah, 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 levels. Blah. Integrity level. Thank you, Amr. You're welcome. Um, and uh, we have A, B, C, and D. And C and D, basically, they use different uh, processors uh, confirming the operation between each other. And so usually, you, so, they so, don't so, need so to you, confirm. So you mean that I use a, a, a another piece of hardware to confirm my, my hardware is OK? Yes. Okay. I have a second processor, mm -hmm. or maybe a second core, mm -hmm. that is doing a similar sub operation like I am doing. And we compare the results, and if the results do not match, then we flag an error. They, I think they and call, that they, case, they call not, this uh, lockstep processors, right? That is one of the methods. Okay. 
it's not just lockstep. You can also have two completely different processors communicating via maybe SPI or I squared C or anything like this. And they compare their inputs and they calculate the same way, but in a different algorithm and they compare results. And if the results do not match, then basically one processor resets the other one or something like this. Mm -hmm. So it uh, lockstep is another method. Yes. And then it is dependent on the safety calculations, uh, the FITs, uh, failure in time uh, calculations, whether it is sufficient, yes or no. And that is something that is done usually at ASLC or ASLD, mm -hmm. which are considered more stringent than ASL A or ASL B. And uh, ASL A and ASL B can be done with only one processor with only one core. Mm -hmm. But in that case, it is important to verify that the processor that you are using is operating properly, meaning that it will execute the instructions that it is supposed to execute in a proper way. And that is what we are talking about today. So in other words, if, yes, if I'm talking about a single processor, uh, ASL B mandates uh, these tests. It, it depends a little bit on the uh, effective requirements from the customer side. But yes, it is part of the ISO standard to request these kinds of tests for single processor implementations. OK. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Okay. So the basic hardware tests for the processor, they are done in the factory. Yeah? So the processor is produced at some point, Freescale or ARM or Samsung or whoever, and they are testing the processor operation. That is not a problem. So when we get this processor, everything is running fine. At least we assume. But these processors, especially in automotive, they are running in 15 years. And after 10 years or something like this, maybe some soldering connections, they are deteriorating, or maybe there is some uh, radiation from the outside coming in that will basically flip some bits. So during lifetime, a single processor implementation, it needs to check itself to see if there are no deteriorations in the operation. And this is exactly what we are trying to do. Yeah, we are doing our best. It is not perfect, but we are doing our best to detect this during operation before anything safety related is executed. Okay. Yeah. So we have a safety operation. That means, for instance, we have a signal that is coming in and we have to transform it and then send it out again. And before we do this, we need to verify that the processor is still operating within the limits that are defined. Okay. That is exactly what we're trying to do. Okay? Okay. Good. So, um, when we are running the software, we are using the hardware. And if this hardware is not running properly, we cannot really be sure that the software is producing the correct results. And still, we are trying to use this software to verify that the hardware is running properly. Mm -hmm. This is never going to be perfect. Yeah, people who know uh, the German guy Münchhausen, yeah, they know that he was basically successful in getting out of a swamp by pulling his own hairs up, like in the picture. Yeah. He was pulling his own hair. <laughs> That's a good example. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So he was pulling on his own hair upward mm -hmm. and together with his horse, he was pulled out of the swamp and then he could basically ride on along. That's why I chose this picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is something that is basically it is not really possible. But there is something possible, at least a little bit. Okay. Yeah, so the software is far from per from perfect to test its own processor, but it's the only thing we have. Yeah, because we cannot repeat the production tests that Freescale or ARM or Samsung have done. Um, that's simply not possible, at least not in a runtime system in the car. So we have to ba make do with what we have. And what we shall do is we shall limit the untested dependencies. 
uh, that uh, means as much as possible as much as possible of course mm -hmm. yeah limit mm -hmm. yeah not completely okay. avoid but limit mm -hmm. yeah so we will try to limit ourselves to a certain amount of operating performances until we have tested that they are working properly okay but some things we need to use even before we can test them so it is not perfect okay okay limitations so what we shall do we shall not use the ram yeah we have not tested the ram we cannot test the ram before we are sure that the processor is running properly so we need to test the processor without using the ram at all that means we shall not even use the stack so we cannot call any functions because okay. we have if we call a function we need to use the stack to register the return address and then we need to return back again and use the stack again to find the return address that's why you so we shall not use it that's why you hinted at the beginning that uh, it needs low level ambition yes most probably these tests yep. are, are in assembly yes okay we cannot use c because c is using the stack c is working with functions okay yeah the first function in c is main and even main is a function using the stack okay. yeah so we have to basically start before main is called and that means that we need to use assembly programming yeah second thing we shall start at the very beginning of operations immediately after each reset yeah every microcontroller has a reset input and if that reset input is released then the program starts at a certain location mm -hmm. at this location exactly there the processor self-test if it is useful shall start not later yeah exactly there okay <clears throat> it should the be basic the, uh, uh, i'm sorry to interrupt you mean it should be the first no. line of code um maybe the second okay maybe the third, the third. Mm -hmm. in assembler of course mm -hmm. yeah maybe there is something that you need to do before anything else fine mm -hmm. but it shall be without any jumps or calls or anything like this the first or the second or the third uh, assembler instructions to start yes can, can i think you as an example of the first instruction before the cpu test uh, i think maybe disabling <coughs> disabling interrupts um that is something that is usually done mm -hmm. normally it is not necessary but just to make sure mm -hmm. defensive programming if you want yes. yes this is done before the processor self-test okay. disable the interrupts yes yeah, because nothing is configured yet. There is no interrupt register configured. There are no interrupt vectors configured. So disabling the interrupts, even if they are disabled in the first place, makes sense. Okay. So this is one of the very few instructions that can happen before the processor self that starts. Okay. Okay. Good. So the principle shall be test before use. So we shall only use things, registers, instructions, and so on, that we have tested before. Okay, so this cannot be done perfectly, because even the first instruction, after the reset, will do something. It will load a register, or it will compare a register, or anything like this. Mm -hmm. But we shall try to test as many things before we use them okay so we limit ourselves to a very restricted set of operation codes in assembler and a very limited set of registers in the very beginning until we have tested the other ones yeah yes. so where that is not possible we limit its use to the absolute minimum okay good so then um maybe maybe i will go to the picture first yeah this is uh, 
basically this is the next slide about the faults, the various possibilities that we have. But let's look at the full adder. <coughs> so for everybody who is not aware of uh, lit digital and logic design, this is basically the circuitry needed to add one bit to another bit, possibly with a carry in, and then having a sum, S, and a carry out. So in total, we have nine NAND gates. And basically what can happen on every single line, and these are signal lines. So every line can be one or zero, one or zero. It's all binary. And if we then go back to the possible hardware faults, yeah, on every line we can have a shortcut to ground, to zero. We can have a shortcut to VCC, meaning a shortcut to one. We can have an open connection. Okay, an open connection is not really defined, but in most hardwares, the open connection is usually either a one or in some other ones, it is a zero, but it is consistently one or zero. It is not defined, but it is consistent. And then what also can happen is a shortcut to a neighboring signal line. So if you have eight bits in parallel, it can happen that bit three and bit four are somehow shortcut. So if we set bit three to one, then also bit four will be one because there is a shortcut in between hardware. Okay. And these things cannot only happen because the soldering is wrong or because the hardware is designed incorrectly, but also because of radiation, also because of the deterioration in the course of the lifetime. It's the, if the system is working 10 years without a hitch, then after 10 years and two days, all of a sudden there is a shortcut. These kinds of things can happen during lifetime. That is exactly what we want to detect. Okay. Yeah. So this is a full adder. And basically, what we can say on every line, be it A or B or C in or any one of the intermediate lines in between, we can have this kind of shortcut to ground, meaning zero or shortcut to VCC, meaning one or open connection, meaning one or the other or in the A and B, because A is one bit and B is one bit, but maybe A is one bit at the position three and there is another A as one bit in the position four, they are connected at that point. Yeah. So this is basically a logic diagram of something where things can go wrong. Very unlikely, not very frequently, okay. But it can happen and this is what we need to defend against. Okay, good. The next question for the type of test that we need is okay. What is the width of the data and the address passes that we are talking about, especially when we are talking about shortcuts between neighboring lines? If we look at the execution times for adding 8-bit values or 16-bit values or 32-bit values or 64-bit values, we can see what the width of the arithmetic logic unit, the calculation unit in the processor is. Because if 8-bit and 16-bit addition takes the same time and 32-bit addition all of a sudden takes double or even more time than 16-bit, then it is very likely that we have a 16-bit ALU and that 32 bits needs two additions of 16 bit plus another 16 bit. Yeah, in modern large processors, we have 32 bits ALUs, but even 64 bit additions and subtractions, they take extra time. That is the way we can try. It is not perfect, okay. but we can try to find out what is the width of the data path in my processor. Okay. Because the various manufacturers, they say, hey, the Intel 
8088, which is a very, very old processor that I started working with in 82. Yeah, it is a 16-bit processor. Yes, okay. But it's got an 8-bit data path. Mm -hmm. Meaning, if I want to add 16-bit, it will take at least double the time of an 8-bit addition. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I can find out, okay, what is the width of the ALU, the arithmetic logic unit, doing the calculations for me. Okay. Well, uh, this popped up the question. Uh, when we say I, I have sure. X-bit processor or X-bit machine, what, what does mm -hmm. the X refer to? Is it the data bus or the register width? Um, normally, what I am interested in is the data pass to the memory. The memory is sometimes internal. Mm -hmm. Today, you even have caches that are the same data path width as the registers. But you still have external memory at a certain data path width. Okay. And especially for the larger processors that are 64 bit, you can still have 32 bit width of data paths. So, so yeah? you are more interested in the bottlenecks? Yes. I am I am interested in the bottlenecks because especially the bottlenecks they are the longest in in uh, probably not meters but micrometers or maybe millimeters yeah how far how long are the connections between the processor and the memory okay and the longest connections they have the largest probability of being in, uh, implicated in shortcuts okay. and that is what I need to know in order to know what are the kinds of tests that I want to do. Mm -hmm. If I have a 16-bit memory path and 32-bit registers, it does not make sense for me to do 32-bit tests. I better do 16-bit tests because it will test the memory path as well. Okay. Yeah, it it will go deep. Yeah, we can we can do I don't know a, a one day training session with specific examples for everybody who is interested, and then we can go into these very kind of details. But this is basically something that is relevant for the kind of test that I want to implement. Okay. Okay. Let's leave it at this. Okay. Yeah, it is it is relevant for the kind of test that I want to implement. If somebody has extra questions, let them connect to me at LinkedIn and send me a question there and I will try and answer as much as I can. Okay? Okay. okay. Good. Um, then I want to take a, a look at the flags. There is an AC flag, an auxiliary carry. Auxiliary carry means um, in the 16-bit area, it means the carry between uh, 8 bit and uh, the uh, the bit 9. Uh, yeah? So the, between the, the lower the, the bit, lower byte uh, and, and the, the upper, upper byte. byte. Yes. Yeah. In the 8 bit world, it means the uh, carry between bit uh, 3 and bit 4. So between the lower nibble and the higher nibble. Mm -hmm. If I have these kinds of flags that I can deduce something about the way that the ALU is working. The same thing is for the N bit in the flag. Some processors have an N bit. That means negative. And it usually is the inverse of, no, it is, it is a copy of the most significant bit of the result. Even if we are talking about unsigned. Okay. Yeah, but it basically means a way of operating of the ALU to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for a logic designer, it is an indication how this ALU is implemented. Okay. You, mean, uh, you mean you can deduce? Is it uh, is it using uh, two's complement or one's complement for uh, negative number representation? Um, it, it, it is an indication whether it is using a two's complement internally or whether it is using a two's complement externally mm -hmm. and then simply using unsigned values internally. Yeah, If I have an n-bit, 
I usually have an internal representation of the two's complement negative subtraction and addition. Okay. And that means that basically subtraction and addition are the same. Yeah? Because I simply do an inversion. Mm -hmm. Yeah? As, uh, a two complements inversion. And then I do an addition. Yeah? If I have a, a subtract B, then I do a B negative and then I add the two values. Yes. Yeah? So I use the same AND gates, NAND gates, NOR gates, whatever is necessary, the same ALU as for an addi addition. Okay. Yeah? So if I have an addition of two values and I have a subtraction of two values, they are using the same hardware. So I don't need to test them both. Yes. I only uh, have to uh, test uh, them uh, one. I was going to conclude less tests. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> a similar thing. Yeah. Look at the execution times for multiplication and division to see if it is part of a dedicated circuit, which means that it is ready in maybe one or two or three clock cycles, mm -hmm. maybe four, or whether it is microcoded. That means that there is an internal programming running inside the processor to do the multiplication. And then all of a sudden you need 10 or 12 or 15 or 30 micro operations, mm -hmm. meaning clock cycles. Uh, uh, yeah? can, I, can I add something here and you correct me? Sure. Uh, sure. For a dedicated circuit, you mean that I have dedicated multiplier and divider yes. inside the LU? For microcoded, somehow they are transformed the instructions of multiply and division into a series of additions and subtractions. Am I right? Yes. Yes. Okay. It's it's a bit simplified, but yes, you are correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are many optimizations possible today. Yeah. But basically, yes, that's exactly it. Okay. okay. And again, if I have a dedicated circuit, I want to try and test it. But if I have a series of additions and subtractions, I can drop the test. I can drop the test exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Johan, can you put a, a speaker because I can hear my voice as an echo? What What can I do? If you can use an, a a a, hit, a, a a headphone or something. Uh, or maybe your Jabra. Uh -huh. I'm using my Jabra. Okay, because I can hear my echo. I started to hear my echo. Okay, I can I can move it a little bit farther away from from the PC, but that's all I can do at the moment. Okay, no problem. And the microphone of my PC is basically muted, so uh, okay. that should not be a problem. Okay. Good. Uh, that's better now. Okay. Okay, then mm -hmm. twenty centimeters is okay. Good. So. I can continue? Yes, please. Any questions? Good. So, the first thing that we need, we need to be able to use registers. And the first register we need, we cannot test before we need it. Okay. But all the others, we need to test. And we will test with something like, if we are using 16-bit, 5555 five, five, and AAAA. -A -A -A. Why? Because, because binary, they are 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, mm -hmm. and the other way around. Yeah? By test, and you mean you write and then read? Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah? Because if I go this way, yeah, I have possible hardware faults, a shortcut to ground. So let's see the full adder. If A is a shortcut to ground, then this NAND will always have an, a 1 as an, as an exit. Yes. That means that this output will always be the inverse of the input here, depending on the B. Mm -hmm. So we will get an influence on the sum and we will get an influence on the carry, carry out as well. Okay. You, you mean yeah? I will not see the full range of the output, maybe? Uh, exactly, okay. exactly. Yeah? Good. 
if I have a shortcut to VCC, which I, means... I, I think it's the same way. It's the same. If we have an open connection, it can be either one or zero, but we have the same situation. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then a shortcut to the neighboring signal line. Yeah. If A is zero, then the neighboring signal line is always a one. Or if A is one, then the neighboring signal line is always a zero. So what is the neighboring line for a neighboring line for A? If I have this five 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 or A A A A, yeah, then basically, uh, can I, can I draw here? No. Yes. Uh, yes, you can use PowerPoint, but uh, uh, if you can go back to the to the full uh, full other circuit. So w what do you mean by a neighboring line of A? That's the A minus one and the A plus one. Okay, so in this not, case, not the B. Not the B. It's not. It's not in this this picture. It's not in this picture. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. <clears throat> but uh, the, you mean the, uh, you, you mean you mean you mean that uh, A is uh, is a bit in a byte, for example. The, uh, the A is one bit in the five 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 or yes. in the one okay. A A A A. I got it now. Yeah. And that means that the neighboring one is always a different value than the value itself. Yes. And that also basically influences the possibilities of the output. Okay. So you say that your conclusion is that using these two values, I can cover the complete four faults. Yes. Okay. That's exactly it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So every register that I want to test, except for the first one, but every register I load with 5555, and then I check that it is still 5555. Uh, except the first one, because you have to use it anyway for the instruction. Yes, the first register, I have no chance. OK. Yeah, so that is Munchausen. Mm -hmm. That is pulling myself out of the swamp by yes. my own hair. Yes. Yes, so okay? you say that it looks OK, but you are not 100% sure it is OK. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the first register is a problem. Mm -hmm. But the second, the third, the fourth, so up on. to the 31st or whatever. Yeah. I can check them. Okay. Yeah. I want to use different opcodes, opcode families for load and test. So I load them with a move, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And I test them with a compare. Uh, by yeah? op by op opcode families, you mean uh, uh, the data being loaded or stored? Uh, I I mean the uh, the binary values of the assembler code. Okay, because I may have yeah? more than one load instruction and one more than the store instruction. Yeah, I, I normally I have a load and a store instruction, mm -hmm. and they differ only by one bit. Because basically the only thing that they change is the it's direction it's and the rest is identical. Okay. Yeah. But the compare instruction, for instance, implies also subtraction. Okay. So I want to use one load and I want to use one compare mm -hmm. because it is using different electronics, different digital designs. That's it. Yeah. So then I have tested all the registers. If somebody is interested in details, let them contact me. No problem. Okay. Maybe we can okay. organize uh, a half day training session to see a sample code for this. I, c I can prepare this, but okay. it will take a little bit of time. Take your time. Uh, we will be yeah, waiting. <laughs> no, I've, uh, um, I'm, I'm not no longer working for Valeo, so I cannot use the Valeo code that I have produced so far. I know. So I have to redesign it. Okay. Yeah. So that, that's the, the test that I need to do. If there is interest enough, I'm perfectly happy to do half a day of design course for these kinds of things. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Uh, just take your time designing so. it and, and we'll be waiting. We'll, know, we'll, we'll go nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. There are people waiting for three years for something on a linked, uh, on a linker uh, configuration file, but that's a different topic. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we want to do some testing of flags. Yeah, some flags they change upon normal operation. So if you do an add, then the zero flag will reflect the result. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the negative flag will reflect the result. The carry flag will reflect the result. There are other flags depending on the processor. Yeah, they are static. 
There are flags for bank selection. There are banks have flags for interrupt enable. It's very, very processor specific. So you have to basically do a study of the processor manuals in order to see what is possible. So basically, but the flags uh, need to be tested. Okay. So basically, these tests are uh, f um, some of them are are making some special operations to make sure that the flags are working as expected, and others, for example, like the bank selection, mm -hmm. you write and read, or, or, or you make sure yeah, that the bank is selected. That's basically what. What. Um, I try to do the tests on the flags that are changing when we do arithmetic logic operations, like adding, subtracting, mm -hmm. multiplication, these kinds of things. Um, I will do specific tests only if necessary for the flags like bank selection, interrupt enable, because these are very, very specific ones. And sometimes it is not really possible to test them without testing all kinds of other things previously. But this discussion dives very deep into process specifics. Okay. So I would prefer not to dive too deep into them and to simply take the arithmetic flags like zero and carry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And see what we can do there. And the rest is processor dependent and to be discussed when we have an actual situation. Okay. 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 Good. So I have a flag zero Z. C for carry and AC for auxiliary carry between the bits number three and four. So the lower four bits and the higher four bits. And we're talking about eight bit processor. Yeah? Eight, eight, bit, processor. Uh, eight, bit, eight bit addition. Maybe it's a 16 bit processor, okay. but eight bit addition. Okay. So if I put a value of one in A and then I test it for zero, which means that I will subtract zero from one. Mm -hmm. There will be nothing happening because the result is one. Mm -hmm. So the result is not zero and the Z flag is zero. One minus zero Equals one. is one. And there is no carry, no borrow, no nothing. Mm -hmm. So the carry will be zero because all the rest is zero minus zero, zero minus zero. Mm -hmm. And even the AC, there is no carry between the lower nibble and the higher nibble. Mm -hmm. So all these three flags will be zero if I do it like this. Okay. Yeah. So if I load A with one and I compare with zero, I think this is an RL78 compar comparison, but that doesn't matter. Yeah, the, the syntax may be different, but the principle is the same. Okay. So this is basically one operation setting the Z, C and AC to zero. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then setting the Z, C and AC to one. If I move A with one, the same thing. So I load it with one and then I add a binary FF. So adding That's this, 255. Yes. Adding this will cause an overflow and the final result will be yeah. zero. The zero yeah. flag will be one. The carry will so be the one. Zero, yes. The zero flag will be set mm -hmm. because there is an overflow. The carry will be set. And because there is also an overflow from the lower nibble into the higher nibble, yes. also the auxiliary carry will be set to one. Okay. So this test will set Z, C and AC to one. Mm -hmm. This is just an example. Yes. Yeah. Make sure to check the processor manuals. Sorry. Yeah. Because every processor is a little bit different. And you have to make sure that you are exactly using the correct executions. Mm -hmm. I think these things are coming from the RL78. Yeah. Processor series. Other processors have different assembler codings and so on. Make sure to get acquainted with these. Okay. Yeah. If I, just as an example, if I need to take on a new processor that I don't know before, and I need to basically do coding for these kinds of self-test, 
I need to read pro uh, programming manuals for at least one, if not two weeks, mm -hmm. before I am confident that I know the assembler codings sufficiently to do these kinds of testing. Uh, yeah, this is normal. Uh, actually, if you have a completely uh, new processor, you need to take your time. You, you remind me, Fatim, I trained before. Um, they were developing uh, system CM very log models for ARM cores. And in order to mm -hmm. make sure that the core is working, they, uh, they had to make tests like this. And, yes. to, and they compare the model versus the for, for architecture manual. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah, and this kinds of, yeah, I, I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But even I, if I get a new processor that I don't know before, I need one or maybe two weeks to read the manuals to be confident that I know enough in order to design these kind of tests. Okay. Yeah, so, so this is normal. Okay. Uh, you need to make sure that you know your processors. Okay. So by okay? my processor, by, by, by the manual, uh, there are special sections or you read it all? For example, I can guess that you need to know the programmer model uh, and the ISA. Or do you need uh, uh, extra sections? Um, I need to know the programming manual sufficiently to know where I can put my code, where I, where the compiler will accept it and so on. Okay. From the processor architecture, I basically need to read it all, mm -hmm. but not in all that detail, okay. because if you have read one uh, full assembler instruction, including flag operations and so on, then the second one is much faster because you know where to concentrate. Okay. Yeah. So you need to read it all, but you can skip uh, larger sections depending on what you need. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. But in order to get the software to really run, to implement it, to make sure that it compiles and that it links and operates properly, you need to know the compiler. Mm -hmm. You need to know the assembler. You need to know the linker, the linker operation, the linker configuration, where to put it, and then you need to debug it, of course. Yeah? So there are many things that you need uh, to read uh, in order uh, to be uh, able this to... Is, this is what you meant early by the programming model. Yes, uh, exactly. Uh, not, not the programmer model, because uh, I understood it's a programmer model of the processor itself. That's uh, one thing. Okay. okay. But only one thing. Okay. Okay? Good. So... The next thing is, there are many inst instructions. Yeah, you have comparison instructions, you have add instructions, you have multiply, you have uh, add with carry, add without carry, subtract with borrow, subtract with borrow. Um, you have all kinds of other instructions influencing flags, influencing registers. And basically, I would like to know how they are implemented in silicon. but People like Freescale and ARM, they will not tell me. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. But we have some hints. We can take a look at what flags are operated, are modified by the instructions. What are the number of clock cycles that are needed per execution? Whether they are fixed, variable, dependent on the size of the operands, these kinds of things. Okay. And we know the deduced, what we have done before, the width of the ALU, whether it is a 16-bit ALU or maybe a 32-bit, yeah? whether we have separate multiplication division instructions implemented in separate silicon or maybe by microcoding. Mm -hmm. yeah? So what we need to do is to read the hardware development manual. Yeah? We need to get a feel for the processor. It is not sufficient to say, okay, we need to test it. No, we need to feel the processor to see how it is structured. Okay. Yeah. If you have a power PC, then every instruction can be instructed by a single value, a single bit to either modify the flags or maybe not modify the flags. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is in the power PC architecture normal. Yeah, so every I, I think it's the same in ARM. 
if I remember correctly. Um, in in ARM, uh, I think it is one type of instructions, yes. The other type of instructions, no. I'm not sure which one is which. Okay. Yeah, but for PowerPC, at, at least I know that you can set a bit and say, influence the flags or don't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is basically only one bit. And it is only one signal line from the ALU to the storage of the flags. Okay. Yeah. So what we need to look at is which flags can be influenced by the addition, by the add with carry, by the subtract with borrow, these kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this needs to give you a feel for the processor. Yeah. And then you know, okay, what do I need to test? I don't want to go into details because this is just a concept presentation and we're already, uh, I think it's uh, 55 minutes already, so I... <laughs> it's okay. Uh, I, I, uh, I, 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 I 20 I, minutes and now we are 55 or something like this. It's okay. Yeah? It's okay. Take your time. <clears throat> it's, a, it's okay. Yeah. So testing instructions. So if we have an increment instruction, the increment is the same as an adding of one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or maybe even adding zero, but with a carry input of one. Yeah? So by here you mean your test that you will run, for example, the instruction of uh, of adding one to a certain value, and uh, maybe you compare its result with uh, incrementing the same value to make sure that the instructions are working. No, 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 I, no, no. I I want to dis to skip the testing of increments. Okay. If I test addition, mm -hmm. then I need I can skip increment. Okay. Yeah, because increment is just add one. Okay. Yeah. And if add is used and ADC is add with carry, then add is the same as ADC with a carry of equal to zero. zero. Yeah. If we have an NEG, a negative instruction, creating a tooth complement, yeah, we can assume that sub is using the same logic gates as add. I'm talking about gates. I'm talking about yeah, chip connections. Yes. Yeah. So the if we have an NEG, so, so I have a question. So basically, yes, by, okay. by by meaning testing instructions, say for example, you have a processor with fourteen instructions. You try to mm -hmm. imagine uh, by this step what uh, what instruction tests could be skipped. Yes. Okay. Um, I want I want to test only the gates. And the hardware connections between the gates. Okay. And if I have tested them once before, mm -hmm. I don't need to test them again. Okay. So if I have tested them with an add with carry, ADC, mm -hmm. I don't need to test ADD, an add without carry, okay. because it is using the same gates and the same connections. Uh, because uh, actually the, the, the title confused me, uh, uh, confused me a little bit. I was thinking you were testing the instructions itself. Here you are, you are talking about the instructions you will use to test the hardware after making sure that the registers are okay. Yes. Okay. I test, I test the registers first. Mm -hmm. And the next thing is I test the flags. Mm -hmm. And the next thing is I test all the instructions, the assembler commands mm -hmm. that I need in order to program my system. Okay. And that means I need to test is ADD working? And it's ADC working, mm -hmm. and it's NEG working, mm -hmm. huh? But I don't need to tell test them all because ADD is the same as ADC. Yes, I get it. Now. Yeah, and SUB is the same as ADD, but with a negated operand. Okay. So if I test NEG and ADD, then I don't need to test SUB. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and compare is the same as SUB, mm -hmm. of course, without storing the results. Yeah, because comparison is just uh, updating the subtract flags. Subtracting yeah. and updating the flags. Yeah, subtracting and see if it is the same by comparing the zero flag. Yes. Okay, good. So then we come to multiplication. Yeah, multiplication and division are very difficult. In modern processors, normally we have extra hardware to do multiplication and division. And some processors, mostly high level, they also have optimizations. 
because multiply by eight is the same as a shift to the left by three bits. Mm -hmm. And this is basically what modern multiplication hardware can do faster than regular multiplication. Okay. Yeah. That's why I always do a test of multiplication with only primes. You mean prime numbers? Prime numbers, yes. Okay. Yeah. To avoid the silicon optimizers. Okay. Yeah. Don't multiply by eight or sixteen or thirty-two. Yeah. Multiply by seven or multiply by whatever. Okay. But take a prime number. Yeah. Test the division with the same primes, but add a constant to avoid a zero remainder. Because zero is too easy. Yeah? And ignore composite instructions. That's got nothing to do with multiplication or division. But some processors, they have something like compare with zero and decrement counter if not zero. Okay, so you need to test the basic instructions. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And there are composite instructions that do a compare with zero and decrement the counter if not zero. And these are just basically microcoded composed instructions. Mm -hmm. And I don't test them at all. Okay. Uh, this, this is more evident in, in CISC processors compared to RISC ones, right? Um, depends on the processor. Yes, you are right. Yes. Okay. In a, in a RISC processor, you will not find many of those. Mm -hmm. In a CISC processor, you will find many, but ignore them nonetheless. Okay. Okay? Okay. Good. So, instruction examples. This is exactly what I mean with use primes. Yeah? There is an AX of 8013, which is a minus 32,749. This is a prime number. Yeah, then we have an 8031 hex, which is a minus 32,719, which is also a prime. Okay. The multiplication should, of course, be positive because it's two negatives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it should be 1 billion, uh, represented 71 million, mm -hmm. 514,531, okay. which is hex 3FDE. 03A3. Mm -hmm. Then I compare the result with 03A3. Mm -hmm. If this is zero, I skip the next instruction. Mm -hmm. So if the comparison is true, then I go directly to the move word. Okay. If it is not zero, then I jump to error. Mm -hmm. If it is zero, then I move BC into AX, I compare it with 3FDE, which is uh, the higher I, level. You mean, you mean I, if it is not zero, I go to move WAX, uh, comma BC? Yes. Mm -hmm. if, it, if it is zero, then it is correct. 3A3 is exactly three. Mm -hmm. So if it is zero, I skip and I go to the move word AX, B, uh, BC. If it is not zero, then it is incorrect, and I jump to the label error. Mm -hmm. Whatever that makes, that's a different, yeah. Okay. Because I I need to compare in 16 bits in this case. Okay. Yeah, my comparison okay. is only 16 bits. Okay, okay. So the first it's comparison it's is clear now. It's clear now. And the second, the second one is three FDE. The, the result, the yeah? result, the result of multiplication is thirty-two bits, but the comparison is done on the on the lower two bytes. Yes, because I have t sixteen bits and sixteen bits in the multiplication, so the result is thirty-two bits, of course. Okay. Yeah, and the result is three FDE mm -hmm. zero three A three. Okay. So I have to compare it in two sixteen-bit sessions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just as an example. Okay. Yeah, but use prime, use prime numbers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, the the thirty two seven four nine is a prime number. Yeah, it is a link into integers dot co number blah blah blah. You can click on it and find out it's a prime. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Then, okay, 
it's already five minutes past, but let's finish. Um, the next thing that needs to be tested is addressing modes. Okay. That means every processor has different ways, different areas of RAM and ROM to basically locate data values in RAM or in ROM or somewhere else. And these things also need to be tested because the addressing is also consuming uh, electronics, NAND gates, and so on. Mm -hmm. And we need one reliable tested location in memory. So in this case, we are trying to use RAM or maybe register, register space, depending on the processor, mm -hmm. where we can store a value reliably. Okay. So we need to test it just like we tested the registers. R r r write and read. Yes. Okay. Yeah, write it, read back, write something else, read back, mm -hmm. and check that it's okay. Yeah, and we, so far, until this moment, we try to use only one single addressing, a very simple addressing mode. Okay. Yeah, not index addressing or five registers added together in order to get everything done or segment registers exchange. No, no, simply, yeah, I have an address and this address is used in order to test. Okay. And when we have checked this one location, then we try all the addressing modes that are used in the rest of the programming. Okay, so you mean... And I, compare I, it I, I with the value that we have stored there. Okay, so you mean I use the simplest addressing mode for, for the writing and reading, then the subsequent tests are simply reading by different addressing modes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so we do the same like in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a register is tested with 5555 mm -hmm. and AAAA. Now we do the same 5555 in a certain memory location mm -hmm. with direct memory addressing. Okay. We check that it works. Then we store AAA in the same memory location and we check that it works. Mm -hmm. And then we store again 5555 and then check the same memory location but with a different addressing mode. Okay. Maybe register indirect or maybe register with offset. Yeah, there are many addressing modes depending, depending on, on the, the processor. processor. Yeah, so we need to test them all. Mm -hmm. And we need to test them with 5555 and with AAAA. If it's only byte wise, we can use 55 and AA. And if it's 32 bit wide, then of course we have different ones. But that's the principle. Okay. Yeah? Yes. So we use one addressing mode only to test the location. And then all possible addressing modes are used to check the results as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we store something there and we check with a different addressing mode that the result is the correct one. Okay. Okay? Okay. Good. An example. The initial value in the L lock, which is the location, okay. is set to AAAA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then all kinds of things happen. I don't care. Then we move HL with the low word of L lock, mm -hmm. and we move AX with the contents of HL. Then I, I say yeah, HL I is high low. Mm -hmm. then and I then I compare with AAAA, mm -hmm. which was stored there before, mm -hmm. up here. Okay. And if it is the same, we skip. If it is not the same, we branch to L error, just like in the previous one. Yes. Okay. Okay. Just as an example. Yeah, if there are questions, but this is only one processor and every processor is a little different and every assembler, even for the same processor, is a little different. So again here, you need to read the various manuals. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Good. Then, we don't have any time left, so I will <laughs> skip this very, very fast. Yeah, Sentinel codes, Hamming distance, mm -hmm. true and false, where to store the result and what to do in case of an error. Um, Omr, if you get feedback that people are interested, um, I can basically expand this into a second one. Uh, you, and mean, discuss you, you, you mean to have, to, to have a second concept called processor self-test uh, part two for these parts? 
if you, if you want, I would not call it processor self-test, but if you want, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. but simply expanding on these topics. Uh, this is not processor self-test by itself, but this is safety programming. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I will we can do this. Uh, we can if you get positive feedback from others, then we can do this. I can expand this again into a second concept presentation and do this, I don't know, in two weeks or in four weeks or in six weeks, whenever you have time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot. So this is for me. The presentation, uh, you can share it, not a problem. Mm -hmm. Attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. These are my contact details, and you can also find me in LinkedIn. If you want to contact me in LinkedIn, uh, let me know that this was the presentation that you saw as the reason for you to contact me, and then I will confirm, and I can answer questions. Uh, yeah, except the ones that you still have, Amr, I think. Uh, well. I can My check. Live I, audience, I, cannot, I, live I, audience I, cannot ask questions, right? Yes, I can check if they have questions. Uh, sure. We have some questions here. Uh, sure, go ahead. Uh, could we rely on the GTAC capabilities like boundary scan testing in this testing process to check any component failure or even short to ground? Mm -hmm. Yes, we can, but only before production or during production. Not at runtime. We cannot. We cannot use uh, JTAC when basically the car is driving from Los Angeles to Washington. <laughs> That's the problem. Okay. Yeah. Our uh, JTAC is possible uh, at least in production, during production, or during development time. Yes. Mm -hmm. But we are talking about runtime testing here. Okay. Uh, um, I have another question. Uh, but. Uh, if only there is a debugging connection available, I think this is not the case in real vehicles. Uh, someone, Correct. Uh, did this, uh, someone is confirming your opinion. Okay. Uh, I'm now trying yes. to open our page. Maybe I, I can see more uh, more comments uh, on the live video. Okay. Uh, okay. This is the questions I have so far. I don't think I have. Okay. Time. Just give me uh, less than a minute. Mm. Okay. Uh, you know, internet in Egypt is very encouraging. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Wait. Please uh, here. Um, okay. We have only three comments, and we already answered them. Okay, nothing else. Okay. Okay. Thank then. you. Thank, thank you, Han. Uh, I appreciate it. And let's. Uh, You're welcome. Uh, uh, Have I, fun. And I will contact you soon for uh, for the safety tests, like the hamming distance and stuff like that you mentioned in the last slide. If if there is enough interest uh, from the people who are listening in or watching the YouTube video, then I can expand this into a second session not uh, yeah, a problem yeah, well i can confirm you there is an interest <laughs> i'm always happy to listen and learn from you happy to listen and learn. okay but that's only one person uh, omar uh, uh, that's uh, not the second one uh, don't, don't, just don't, you right don't underestimate me <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> it's okay okay thanks you if you want me, we can do a second session on the topics that i basically put into the if we have time section no okay. problem Okay. okay, I'm sure. Thank I'm you sure. very much. Thank you. Thanks to you. Uh, it was very informative. Have a nice evening. You too. And uh, thank you all. Bye bye. Shukran. Afwan. Bye. كل سنة وانتو طيبين. نشوفكم على خير إن شاء الله. وزي ما يوهان قال لو في اهتمام بال بالاكسترا سيفتي ميكانيزمز أو سيفتي توبكس اللي قالها في آخر سلايد ياريت تبعتوا لنا الفيدباك وأنا هأكوردينيت مع الميعاد بتاع السيشن يعني. I was just telling them that uh, if there is an interest, I was uh, replying your message in Arabic. Okay. That's what I thought already, even okay. if I didn't understand. Uh, okay. I think it's you should okay. be speaking Arabic by now, <laughs> somehow. Uh, Afwan, shukran, and uh, sabal khair, and something like this. Salamu alaikum. You told uh, me salamu alaikum before. Yeah, okay, sure, of course, of course. <laughs> yeah. Salamu alaikum. Uh, okay. okay. Thanks, Johan. Have See a nice you. evening. Thank you, you, you very much, and Thank good you. night. Bye bye.
Okay. Okay. Thanks, Johan. Have a nice evening. Thank you very much and Thank good you. night.